Okay, so this is question number 33 on page uh, 170. It's uh, chapter 7, Momentum. Uh, this question, I'll read it out. It says, an explosion breaks an object into two pieces, one of which has 1.5 times the mass of the other. If... 4,500 joules were released in the explosion, how much kinetic energy did each piece acquire? So uh, the first thing I'm going to start off is maybe, you know, draw a little diagram and like this. And so this is, let's say, M1 and this is M2. And this guy goes off like this and this guy goes off like this. So, um, this is after the explosion. Obviously, before the explosion, uh, you just have one piece and the velocity is zero. Now, let's go ahead and apply conservation of momentum. And we can say initial momentum was zero. And finally, we have uh, M1 V1 plus M2 V2 is the final momentum. Uh, now, the other thing which is given is that one mass is twice the mass of the other. So I'm going to say that m2 is the smaller one, and I'm going to set m2 equal to m. That means m1 is the bigger one, and I'll say, therefore, it's equal to 1.5 m. Now, having said this because it says in the question the two pieces of which one uh, is has 1.5 times the mass of the other that's what that's what this is now describing we can now take these and put them into the momentum equation so we can say zero equals uh, and and listen I'm going to rewrite 1.5 as uh, 3 over 2 just because it's much more convenient I don't like working with the decimal in this case because we're going to do some math so uh, for m1 therefore I would go 3 over 2 m v1 plus and m2 is just m v2 now what I can do is I can divide the whole equation by m that's just zero, right? And I, so the m's cancel out. And now I can solve for v2. And this is going to help me in a minute. So if I go negative uh, 3 over 2 v1, that's going to equal v2. That's as far as I can take this now. I can't go any further here with momentum. So we're going to have to switch over uh, to an energy analysis. Now the question says, if 4,500 joules were released in the explosion. So remember, the work energy theorem, right? Work energy th theorem says that work is equal to the uh, change in the kinetic energy. So in this case, we know that there was 4,500 joules done in the explosion, that must be equal to the change in the kinetic energy. Therefore, that's going to equal to the final, remember, delta is always final minus initial, right? However, I already know, right, that nothing initially here in this situation, nothing was moving initially. So, I can, I can now know that my initial kinetic energy was zero, so I cancel that out. So now I know that 4,500 joules has to equal my final kinetic energy. Now my final kinetic energy consists of this scenario over here, and that's going to equal the kinetic energy of two masses. So therefore I can rewrite this equation as the kinetic energy of mass number one, plus the kinetic energy of mass number two. That's finally in both cases, okay? Now, I can substitute equations in for kinetic energy. So 4,500 is equal to 
1 half, right? And now this one is m1 v1 squared plus 1 half m2 v2 squared. Now, once again, I can apply my uh, substitution for the masses because the masses are related. So I'm going to apply this over here again. So I'm going to go 4,500 is equal to 1 half. Now, for m1, I'm going to put uh, 3 over 2 m v1 squared plus uh, 1 half. Now, for m2, I'm just going to put m v2 squared. And I can rewrite this one last time again. Uh, combining the fraction in front here, which is going to be 3 over 4 mv1 squared plus 1 half mv2 squared. Now the next thing which I'm going to do here is I'm going to take uh, this equivalency between the velocities and substitute this in um, for the um, for the uh, value here. Actually, you know what? I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's stop right here. And so let's let's uh, let's let's attack this from a different perspective. So let's kind of uh, uh, just ignore this for now. And let's stop at that at that line. So the next thing we want to do is it says here, um, how much kinetic energy did each one require? So what the way I'm going to approach this is I'm going to say, OK, I want to know the ratio of Ke1 divided by Ke2. Because if I know that, then I know what proportion of the 4,500 was uh, taken by each one. So now I'm going to pl plug these equations in. And I'm going to say 1 is 1 half m1. Uh, v1 squared, and that, and the other one is divided by one half m2 v2 squared. Now I'll plug in my masses, so we'll kind of draw a line here and say, okay, let's just ignore that for a moment. And um, what I'm going to do is substitute for the m's again. So I'm going to go one half m1 was uh, three over two m v1 squared, and then this one was 1 half m uh, v2 squared. So this ends up being uh, 3 quarters m v1 squared divided by 1 half m uh, v2 squared. Now the m's cancel out, okay, and so I'm left with Ke1 all over Ke2 is equal to uh, 3 quarters, that's a 4, uh, v1 squared divided by 1 half v2 squared. Now what I do is I take this substitution here, and I'll substitute that in. OK, so I'm going to get 3 quarters. Uh, v1 squared divided by, and now uh, I'll get on the bottom 1 half, and now I'll get negative uh, 3 over 2. And so I'm going to have to squ well, let's put the value in first. v1 squared, right? Because that's, because you see v2 is negative 3 halves v1. But I still have to square that, right? Because it's it's v2 squared. So now what do I get? Well, let's kind of move this over a little bit. And you're, you're gonna see the v1s are gonna cancel out. So I'm gonna have three quarters v1 squared divided by one half. Now, three negative three squared is nine, right? And uh, two squared is four. And then we have v1 squared. Now the v1 squareds cancel out. And we're left with 
This is 9 over 8, so 3 quarters on the top, 9 over 8 on the bottom. If we want to divide, we invert and multiply, right? So we get 8 over 9, okay? And so therefore, uh, 3 times 8, that's 24 and 36. So the ratio, right? And, you know, uh, how many times do, how does you reduce this? 6 goes into, uh, okay, that's actually uh, 12 goes into 24 twice, and 12 goes into 36 three times. So now we have a relationship uh, between Ke1 and Ke2, and we can say Ke1 is equal to 2 thirds Ke2. So now let's go back to this equation we wrote up here, right there, and let's rewrite that down here because to try and get it in the same frame. And let's go, okay, so 4,500 is equal to Ke1 plus Ke2. But now we can say, aha, what's Ke1? It's, it's 2 thirds Ke2, right? plus Ke2. Now we can factor out the Ke2. So you go 2 thirds plus 1 uh, times Ke2. And so therefore, you can solve. This ends up being, uh, what is it, 5 thirds. Ke2, that's 4,500 on this side. Therefore, if you say, okay, what's Ke2? That's 3 fifths times 4,500 equals Ke2. So if you multiply that out, uh, you get 2,700. And so now, to find the other one, it's really easy, right? Because you know you know this equation, so you know that uh, 4,500 minus 2,700 uh, has got to equal Ke1, right? And that is 1,800. And that's Ke1. So that's the solution for this.